What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Knights of Horror. Today on Timelines, yes, this is an episode of Timelines, we are talking about the Texas legend himself, Leatherface, in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Timelines Explained. Now, this is an interesting timeline. Now, obviously, they've made a total, I've, I believe, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight films in the franchise um, with a original timeline from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1 through 4 to a rebooted timeline to some prequels that are reboots or I, I don't know. It's a really hard timeline to explain with this, but we're going to break that down today. Um, if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification be aware every time we put up a new video and give this video a like if you like these episodes of Timelines. We release them once at the end of every month. Uh, with tons of content here on the channel as well from podcasts to original videos original series as well um, So stay tuned because you never know your favorite franchise in the horror world might be next today We are talking like I said about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre timeline um, This is a very interesting timeline one of my favorite all-time horror films uh, Which is the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre which released in 1974 and um, Really put the slasher name in the uh, spotlight to more to come with, of course, Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, and Freddy Krueger, who I consider, and a lot of people consider, the Titans of Terror. Um, but let, let's just jump right into it, shall we? So, obviously, you have your uh, your first film, which is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It came out in 1974. Uh, this film series, the, the character of Leatherface is loosely based off a serial killer uh, that actually was inspired by True Events' name. I believe it was... Uh, was it Ed Gein or N. Gein? I don't remember his name. Um, but this is loosely based off of, uh, that killer as well in real life. Um, so you have three different timelines for this um, for this franchise. You have the original timeline, which consisted of four movies. You have the um, you have the reboot timeline, which consisted of two movies, and you have the new original timeline which consisted of two movies but then they could they include the original part of the timeline it's kind of confusing and with the a new film coming in 2021 uh which is slated to come out it, it I, I don't know where that's going to go if that's going to be a direct sequel from the original or if it's going to be its own thing or if it's going to do a halloween where it just where it just forgets all the other sequels and goes directly from one that's usually what a lot of people have been doing but let, let's start here uh with texas chainsaw massacre uh, released in 1974, the the movie that I think freaked and scared a lot of people out. Um, obviously, this is the original right here. We, we get our first glimpse of what Leatherface looks like and who this killer is with the uh, very terrifying Sawyer family. Uh, the cannibals, uh, they, they're just all crazy, interesting people. <laughs> but uh, this is our first look at Leatherface and see what he does. Obviously, the cannibal who kills people takes their face off and makes masks around them this was something new in the 70s when this came out and i think it like i said scared a lot of people uh and it made it gave texas a name from here on out obviously this this cannibal uh face wearing uh chainsaw uh wielding uh psychopath and i think he put his name in the history books forever to be uh, Leatherface, obviously, but yeah, man, it, it, it's definitely one of those movies that you cannot forget, especially if you're a horror fan. You definitely have to check this one out. But that is the first film of the original timeline. From there, we go to Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, which was released in 1986. Uh, just about 12 years after the original, they finally made a sequel to this. And this one had Bill Moisley in it, uh, best known as his role in the Devil's Rejects trilogy as Otis. Um, and this was a big blockbuster movie that a lot of people know him for as well. Another very weird, interesting movie uh, that I've seen come to life at Halloween Horror Nights multiple times. Uh, and it, again, just another chapter of the Sawyer family that you see more and more of the family members. Um, it, it's just an interesting movie as it is. Uh, but yeah, this is the second part to the original. So this is part of the original timeline of films that were released. And then you have uh, Leatherface, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, which came out in 1990, four years after the sequel came out. Again, another really weird one. These these movies, as they got like more sequels, they just started getting weird and weird. Like from the way Leatherface acted to the members of his family, 
Uh, even a lot of the people that are in these films that are just went on to be iconic actors, which we'll get to in, of course, uh, Texas Chainsaw The Next Generation. But it definitely, they got... It, it just seems like after every film, like the the first one is a classic. It's an original. Everyone loves that one. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 has a very big cult following as well. Uh, it seems like when 3 and 4 came out, though, they started kind of losing everyone's interest. And that was uh, definitely something. But, uh, yeah, Leatherface, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 is definitely up there with something. And then you have, of course, Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation, which was released five years after the third movie in 1995. And this one actually starred, uh, co-starred Matthew McConaughey uh, in one of his early roles. So it was interesting to see a, a well-known actor like Matthew McConaughey come out in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Uh, very interesting. I remember watching this as a kid, just weirded out as to this family, like... One of the ladies in in the the Sawyer family is like a normal. She works a normal job and everything, but then she comes home and like Leatherface is there, like tormenting victims and all this stuff. And it, it's just really weird. Like I, it, very confusing to me. But that is the original timeline for um, the uh, the first four films. So it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which was released in 1974. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, which was released in 1986. Uh, Leatherface, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, which was released in 1990, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation, which was released in 1995. That is timeline number one. And then in 2003, we got our first ever much darker and gorier reboot uh, of the iconic killer. And this is what really spawned the whole reboot era for horror and it up the gore for horror movies as well because this actually came out uh, way before Saw did so this this made it a lot more this when this movie came out it was actually something new for horror fans it was actually really considered really gory for horror fans as well because uh, Saw didn't come out till I believe 2004 which really kept that line of gore going as well as Hostel as well um, but this Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot is probably one of my favorites I, I really do like the rebooted timeline um, it goes more into detail as to um, um, who Leatherface was, you know, he worked at a, a meat factory and, you know, instead, like the only thing, I think the only major change they did is instead of being known as the Sawyer family, they were known as now the Hewitt family. Um, you have Arlie Ermey playing the the dad, which was, a, he was a very terrifying role. And that guy's such a good actor. Um, ex uh, U.S. Marine uh, drill sergeant gone uh, actor. And he, he does a really good job in this role specifically. Uh, he's very creepy, very scary, and very mean, um, as as the rest of the Hewitt family is as well. Uh, Grandpa is more, uh, it looks more alive, but he's missing his legs, which it, he, he's a very creepy role as well. Um, but this rebooted franchise, like I said, added a lot of interesting stuff to the overall lore of Leatherface. Obviously, you saw uh, more about his background, and, and the man who played Leatherface was this like six-foot... Um, stunt guy or wrestler or i forget what he was but he was just terrifying like I, I i had saw a bunch of like behind the scenes of him just getting too much into the role um and he said he was like born to play this role and stuff so that was very interesting and this uh reboot actually came out in 2003 and then we got the texas chainsaw massacre the beginning which released three years later in 2006 uh, this actually was the prequel to the reboot, uh, which explained a lot of the story of him, uh, Leatherface, working at a meat packaging place um, and butchering meat, and then how he got the chainsaw, and just his whole start of him being this iconic character, Leatherface. Um, very interesting film as well. Like I said, it, it provided a lot of background as to who Leatherface was, and it kind of rebooted this whole franchise uh in general just to give us a new understanding of this character but now here's where things get a little confusing this is the new original timeline so this they they count uh they actually include canon um the original texas chainsaw massacre in 1974 but the list goes as follows in 2017 we're going to jump ahead a little bit uh, and then we'll come back to the other texas chainsaw movie but in 2017 they released a prequel film uh showing leatherface growing up as a little boy being born and then growing up and then I think a little bit of his teenagers. I never got to see this one personally, but uh, this one was called Leatherface, which was re re released in 2017. And this was the like prequel prequel that kind of leads into Texas Chainsaw Massacre, apparently. Um, but it, like I said, it shows him growing up. It shows him with his like his uh, the reason why he wears like the, the other people's masks is because I think he had like a 
like a face disease where his like skin was all messed up and stuff so he wears other people's faces to cover that up um and this one from what i've heard it was just not good and it was really weird um and it really didn't focus too much on leatherface as but it focused more on his family at the time so that was interesting then it goes into texas chainsaw massacre 1974 which is the very first uh texas chainsaw massacre movie ever made which obviously it goes from the prequel to the main movie then it gets really interesting in 2013 they released texas chainsaw 3d which gave the character a whole new look and it gave the the universe a whole new feel um you know leatherface he's iconic for his costumes his most iconic costume obviously is the uh the jeans the boots and the, uh, the the nice white shirt, like the dress button, dress striped shirt, and of course the um, the butcher, uh, what is it like, like the, like the little cape that they wear in the front right there, uh, and of course his chainsaw and his mask. Um, they went a kind of whole different route with this character's uh, costume, and they gave him like a red like sweater. He still wore the, like the face masks, and he had the chainsaw and everything, but it was different. It was definitely a different look for the character. Um, I think this was around the time that they were really bringing back a lot of the icons, so they wanted to, I, I think like, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street just did reboot, Friday the 13th just did reboot, uh, I think Rob Zombie's Halloween was still relevant at the time, so Texas Chainsaw wanted to hop on that bandwagon and be part of the rebooted series. Um, and this one was a very, it had a weird ending, I guess one of the main characters who comes up to the cabin is a distant relative, uh, or their, their cousins of uh leatherface so she ends up becoming like his caretaker at the end i guess the original family they they show him in the very beginning they get they get killed and they get shot up but he was the only one that survived and grew up all this time in an empty house where one of the new characters that we are introduced to in the film who was one of the teens is actually a cousin of leatherface and takes on the mantle to take care of leatherface so very interesting uh story as it is but yeah this this universe is definitely an interesting one um obviously you have of course the original timeline which is texas chainsaw massacre one two and uh one two three and four then you have the of course rebooted timeline which is texas chainsaw massacre and texas chainsaw massacre at the beginning and then you have the new original re uh timeline which is leather texas chainsaw massacre and texas chainsaw 3d Another very complicated timeline, if you ask me. I mean, these horror movies, they tend to like to reboot things. They like to start new um, start new universes, start new uh, origin stories, lores. Um, or they do a Halloween where they just <laughs> they take away all the other sequels and go from the first one and make this like the new sequel. So we've been, we've been seeing that a lot lately. Uh, I don't know where the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre film is going to take place. From the sub caption we've gotten from the one poster they released, uh, it looks like this might be a direct sequel from the original 1974 one. So we shall see. Maybe this is going to be, again, like a Halloween scenario where they just delete every other sequel that's ever been made and make it go from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974 to the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre that's going to be coming out in 2021. But let me know what you guys think about this timeline. This was a little bit fun to break down and, and check out. Um, be, be sure to tune in again next month for another episode of Timelines, but tune in every week for new content, whether it be podcast, series, original videos, you name it, we do it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification be where every time we put up a new video, hit up that like button if you guys like this video and leave some comments below what you guys thought of this timeline. Uh, follow us on social media at the Knights of Horror on Instagram and, and at Knights of Horror on Twitter. Uh, other than that, my name is Anthony from the Knights of Horror. Hope you guys enjoy this video and I will see you guys next time.